The TV legal drama Depp vs. Heard has been a smash hit. However, producers may still drop Amber due to her bad acting and poor chemistry with co-star Camille Vasquez. No, I didn't ask you about anything. But there's another professional whose job rivaled potentially even the mental demands of Elaine Bredehoff's. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm talking about Judy, the court reporter. So just how hard is it for the brain of a court reporter like Judy's to write down every single thing said in court for 122 hours over six weeks in a defamation trial worth millions of dollars? I consider myself a pretty fast typer at around 105 words per minute. But I still couldn't be a court reporter because the average person talks at 120 to 150 words per minute. Now, the world's fastest English typist in 2005 was Barbara Blackburn, who types twice as fast as me. Now I can do nearly 200 words a minute with my Apple IIc. To simulate me typing as fast as Barbara, here's me trying to transcribe the court speech at half speed. You see Willy Wonka, Ezra, and I didn't see 21 jokes. I couldn't keep up for very long at all. So the way court reporters or court stenographers like Judy reach typing speeds of over 300 words per minute is by spending over two years learning to use a special machine and a kind of new language. The stenography machine only has 22 keys, so some keys have to be combined. Since there's no M on the keyboard to type M, you combine P and H. Like playing chords on a piano, stenographers press several keys at once to make a single word. With some special software, I can emulate a sonography machine with a normal keyboard. So sonographers essentially type out how things sound rather than how they're spelled. So to type through, it's just T-H-R-U. However, it's not that simple because they are basically typing a coded version of the English language that they have to memorize. For example, just the R and L keys make the word recall and K and W makes request. They can even lay down whole phrases in a single stroke. For example, T, K, W, and U becomes did you witness. So just how difficult is this? Well, whether people have an accent, mumble, talk over each other, speak really fast, or have trouble pronouncing things. Yes, yeah, stumbled, I can't think. do character logically. That one's just a okay. tough one for me. Judy's brain has to continuously process all incoming speech, translate it into the stenograph language, and then instruct her hands to press the right chord. This is very taxing on her working memory. If someone talks a little too fast or if she falls even a little bit behind because she has to correct a mistake, she'll be typing one thing while simultaneously storing new words in her working memory. And then while she types out those words, she's storing the next words in her working memory and on and on so her working memory never gets a break. Of course, she has to be aware of court rules too. Objection leading. Co Objection, your honor. Hearsay. Objection, hearsay. It's fine. Objection, it hearsay. <laughs> Judy has to keep all this up at a rapid pace for hours and hours a day. Now, the closest thing I could find to a study on the brains of court stenographers was this study on Japanese shorthand. Shorthand is basically the handwritten form of what Judy does. Speech is translated into a code of lines and squiggles that allows the person to write by hand faster than most people can type. English shorthand looks somewhat similar. The paper says stenographers require, quote, extreme attention and the ability to rapidly switch between automatic and deliberate tasks, meaning Judy has to automatically type while she concentrates on what everyone's saying and then has to switch to automatically listening while she concentrates on typing, say when she needs to spell an uncommon word or correct a mistake. Now, when things get really hard, is in a situation like this. Is John right? is not an accurate historian of what happened during Ms. Heard. that uh, Ms. period Heard. of time. I'll guarantee Ms. you. Ms. Heard, that. that's not my question. Ms. And Heard, I to check Ms. On Heard. And see I'm going to move to strike everything after I knocked on one bathroom yeah, door. Can't do that. She's Research suggests that without conscious focus, the brain can only automatically store two seconds of language in your working memory. This is why when your boyfriend or girlfriend catches you not paying attention, you can sometimes repeat the last two seconds of what they said to make it seem like you were listening all along. Research on court stenographers is thin. I could only find that one paper on Japanese shorthand writers. However, there is a similar profession that has been studied a lot. Researchers acknowledge it as being extremely cognitively demanding, and it's so taxing on the brain that professionals can only do it for 30 minutes at a time. Simultaneous interpretation is listening to one language while translating into another language at the same time. What's going on in their brains is a bit of a mystery. For a while, some researchers assumed that simultaneous interpreters developed amazing working memory, being able to hold tons of words and phrases in their head while translating. 
Indeed, this one paper did find that the brain region associated with working memory was a little bigger in professional interpreters. But this other paper suggests that they still only have about two seconds of automatic speech memory like the rest of us. What's actually unique about interpreters' brains is that they are really efficient at coordinating and getting many parts of the brain working together. And another paper says they're better than normal people at task switching. Interpreters and stenographers are similar in that they both have to input and output information at the same time. Of course, interpreting is harder because they have to be an expert in an entirely different language, not just a coded version of English. The basic challenge that stenographers and interpreters share is the classic factory dilemma. They are constantly offloading information from their working memory at the same time that it's being filled up. If their translation doesn't keep up with the speaker, their working memory will overload, causing them to miss words or entire sentences. Many translators also use their own type of shorthand notes to reduce the burden on their working memory. If the speech is simply too fast, then they just have to decide which words to omit and give the meaningful gist. He wants you to tell, look in camera, okay? That's all he said? Yes. It's such a complicated task that as recently as 1945, some of the people organizing the Nuremberg trial thought simultaneous interpretation was downright impossible. So what happens if interpreters don't take their 30 minute breaks? Well, in 2009, former Libyan leader Gaddafi insisted on using only his personal interpreter for a lengthy speech at the UN. After 75 minutes of continuous interpreting without a break, he yelled, I can't take this anymore into the microphone and allegedly collapsed. So let's go back to stenography. Just how hard is it? And would there be any point to learning difficult skills like this if you weren't trying to be a professional court reporter? Stenographers have to do their work under an intense time pressure. They need to type super fast without making any mistakes. Daniel Kahneman, in his book Thinking Fast and Slow, said specifically switching from one task to another is effortful, especially under time pressure. And as mentioned, stenographers have to task switch any time they spell something, make a correction, and so on. They have to rely on their working memory to do all this while constantly storing new speech in their head. And as Daniel Kahneman says, anything that occupies your working memory reduces your ability to think. Not only that, competing stimuli, like say people talking over each other, make it harder to remember words. So it's no wonder that the dropout rate from stenography school is so high. I don't want to be your stupid court reporter. I quit. One court reporter said it was common to see people crying at their desks in a dictation room or in a corner. Crying in the corner, huh? Mind if I join you? Nowadays, it seems like we have more goals than ever, but not enough time or focus to achieve them. So naturally, using our mental resources on learning something new that doesn't directly help us achieve our goals feels like a waste of time. On top of that, the internet is rapidly weakening our brains and our self-control. Hence, dopamine detoxes have become very popular as abstaining from low effort entertainment like social media or Netflix is not to reverse the damage done to your self-control. It's the frontal lobe of the brain that is very important for self-control. And it gets weakened when you have a constant drip of dopamine from Instagram, Netflix, video games, and so on. But how can you proactively strengthen your frontal lobe without completely giving up the internet? A lot of research has found that there are brain benefits to simply being bilingual. There's evidence that bilingual students end up having better academic performance. And cognitive neuroscientist Ellen Bialystok has said that bilingual children essentially are able to better pay attention to what is important, and that bilinguals can use their frontal lobe more efficiently. A 2004 study of hers even found that it takes bilinguals five or six years longer to develop Alzheimer's. However, research suggests that learning all kinds of challenging skills, not just languages, strengthens your frontal lobe. Learning an instrument, chess, tennis, team sports, or even the abacus can strengthen executive functions. The functions of the frontal lobe responsible for diligence and self-control. Of course, these traits are necessary for following through on your goals. The other day, I was walking near Shinjuku and saw a sign for an abacus school. The sign wasn't advertising how useful it is to know abacus, but that by learning it, kids' attentiveness, focus, diligence, and so on will improve as a byproduct. So going back to my original question, why bother learning hard things if you don't need to? 
Well, the brain is a generalized meat machine. Whether you strengthen your focus and diligence by learning sonography, another language, or the abacus, you can expect your focus and self-control to be better in general. Gotcha! And I also appreciate Judy because she's a rock star. So considering that their expertise are so different, it's not really appropriate to compare Judy the rock star stenographer and say Camille Vasquez. But it's probably safe to say that they both have extra strong frontal lobes. Since the Johnny Depp trial is over, I've been looking for a new series to watch, but many of the shows that looked good were not available for me to watch because I'm in Japan. Personally, I would rather not have my internet service provider be telling Netflix or other websites specifically where I'm located, especially when I'm leaking a video about my spouse to TMZ. That's where the sponsor of this video, NordVPN, comes in. Check out nordvpn.com slash what I've learned for a huge discount on your plan. With Nord, I can keep my internet activity private from my ISP, and I can even create the illusion that I'm actually in a different country, so I can still watch content that is only available in America or Australia or any of the nearly 60 different countries where NordVPN has its 5,800 plus servers. I usually have the VPN going on my laptop so I can keep my data safe while I'm at a cafe or using public Wi-Fi. NordVPN is the fastest VPN out there and the monthly cost is only about the price of a cup of coffee. And they're offering a huge discount off your plan at nordvpn.com slash what I've learned. 